Space weather really covers a whole range of things. It's all driven by the sun, but actually all the effects are felt here at the Earth. It causes damage to power supplies, causes disruption to aviation and communications. We're particularly interested in satellites. I mean, if you think about mobile phones, internet, the GPS type satellites, everything is depending on satellites more and more and more. The Antarctic is a really important place for us because we make measurements of special types of radio waves at Halley which originate around the Earth in space. We put that data together and we did some theoretical work and we showed that under particular conditions the waves which we see in the Antarctica accelerate the charged particles, we're talking about electrons, to very high energies in space. We showed that they are a major process in forming the whole of the Earth's radiation belts. Our research has gone into something which is now practical, where we make forecasts of the radiation environment to help protect satellites on orbit. To try and develop a model which will do forecasting is really, really challenging. We were putting into our model the increase in the numbers of particles and the decreases. Sarah Glout, one of the team, actually wrote the codes to be able to do that. Nigel Meredith was really involved in gathering all the wave data, and Peter Kirsch was managing all this real-time data from different places, putting that here into the Polar Data Center and developing a real-time system. The system is called SARIF, and you can see our forecast, and they will extend up to something like 24 hours ahead. They're updated every hour, and it's done automatically using data from all over the world. A lot of our work supports not just the National Risk Register, but also the Severe Space Weather Preparedness Strategy being developed by government. And actually, I've now become chair of the Space Environment Impacts Expert Group. And I now interact with officials in the Department of Energy Security and Net Zero, with people in the Department for Transport, Government Office of Science, and we try and assess all kinds of risks. And next stage is going to be the mitigation type plans. Satellites have to be very robust to survive the rigours of space. When they were first introduced, we did not feel that the satellite operators and manufacturers were really recognising increased risks. Richard's work has been fundamental in helping us to understand and decide whether or not we're going to ensure those, in part on the basis of whether or not they could be affected by space weather. We could not have done what we have done, either without the international collaborations and more recently actually through the continued funding from NERC. And I'm really grateful. The most important part of our research now is talking to the government departments and try and bring the scientific community together to actually try and take this forward and try and protect our critical national infrastructure.